a micrometer to build scale models? Will using a micrometer improve your modeling results? Will owning a micrometer give you special powers in the modeling universe? Welcome to Scale Model Workshop. In this video, I want to take a look at how useful a micrometer might be to your form of scale modeling. And hopefully by the end, you'll have a little more information so you can decide for yourself. To better understand what a micrometer can do, it's helpful to start with a comparison to the more commonly used caliper typically found on many modeling benches. First off, they don't look anything alike. Second, how they function and how you manipulate them is entirely different. The L-shaped frame of the caliper is made up of a single piece of steel. The long leg of the L contains the scale and the short leg forms the jaw. The movable slide is made up of a jaw with a vernier a dial gauge, or a digital readout. You use the caliper by moving the slide back and forth. How easily the slide moves is controlled by an adjustable shim fit into the slide. A caliper is fast and easy to use. Since most calipers are designed to measure outside, inside, and depth, they're extremely versatile. The form of the caliper lends itself to a digital display making it very easy to read, zero out anywhere along the scale, and convert from inches to millimeters. On the negative side, because the slide needs to move up and down the rule relatively easily, there's an inherent bit of slop between the slide, shim, and the rule. The result is that the accuracy of the measurement is more easily affected by the amount of force applied to the slide, especially if what you're trying to measure is positioned at the tip of the jaws, so they're not considered to be the most precise measuring instrument. On the other hand, the design of the micrometer minimizes error in two ways. First, the heavy frame of the micrometer pretty much eliminates any flex in the system, especially for the small sizes like we use for modeling. Second, rather than the slide, the micrometer uses a precisely machined threaded system that results in more reliable movement of the spindle in relation to the anvil. However, this precision comes at a price, both literally and figuratively. Micrometers are made to measure only one dimension, so unlike the combination caliper, you'll need a separate micrometer to measure outside, inside, and depth. Also, micrometer heads generally only cover one inch, so you need a number of micrometers to cover the range of an average six-inch caliper. Because of the construction of the frame and the large flat surface between the anvil and the spindle, the typical micrometer can't be used to measure everything, so there are a myriad of specialty micrometers available for a multitude of situations. Certain micrometers like this tube or ball anvil and unimicrometer can be handy for certain situations, but keep in mind that the support for the anvil is not as rigid as conventional types, so they're much more susceptible to inaccurate measurement if too much force is applied. Finally, adding a digital readout to a micrometer can make them more cumbersome to handle. So back to the question of whether you need a micrometer or not. Well, that depends on how much precision you need. If you do any amount of model machine work, absolutely, and I'm sure you already have at least one. If you're a kitchen table modeler, it's probably the last tool you'll want to consider. For those in between, it's an option. So let me offer a few suggestions and tips for you. If I was only going to have one micrometer on my modeling bench, it would simply be the good old one-inch micrometer found in every machinist's toolbox. And here's why. First off, it's easy to handle. And if you haven't used a micrometer before, this is how you typically hold one. However, there might be times when what you want to measure almost requires three hands. So there are micrometer stands available. Second, once you feel comfortable adding and subtracting from 25, the typical micrometer scale is quick and easy to read. And there are no batteries necessary. It's always on and it always works. If you want to know more about how to read a micrometer scale, I put up a short companion video explaining the process, or check out my webpage on measuring tools. If you're a strict digitarian and avoid all contact with the analog world, 
I strongly suggest you always have a spare fresh battery handy. Some micrometers are available with a ratchet system, also known as a constant force device, either built into the thimble or in a separate knob on top of the thimble. The ratchet allows for a more repeatable amount of pressure to be applied. I personally like having the option of a ratchet, but I prefer that it's located on top of the thimble. Otherwise, if the ratchet's in the thimble and you want to have more control over the force, you have to move down in front of the knurling on the scale, which isn't very convenient. So when do I find a micrometer indispensable for scale modeling? Without a doubt, the most important time is when I'm fitting a pin part, especially with machine parts that I always locate and attach with pins. As I explained in my previous video on raised detail, one of the hallmarks of what I try and recreate is the actual separation that exists between the different parts, and it requires that the space doesn't get filled with glue, so the parts are retained in place by press fit. There's not a lot of room for error, an undersized hole might keep the part from going to place at all, and an oversized hole ruins the process. Styrene sheet stock can vary in thickness despite what it says on the label. So I always confirm the thickness of what I'm using for the construction of more critical parts. And the same goes for wire diameters. The micrometer is just flat more reliable for this. And of course, when I'm machining parts, a micrometer is essential. These are just a few examples, but basically it boils down to the initial question of how much precision do you really need for what you're doing? There's no disputing that the micrometer is more precise, but do you need that precision? Finally, as with any measuring tool, buy a quality micrometer. Any measuring tool that returns inaccurate or unrepeatable measurements is less than useless. If you take care of it, a good micrometer will be a once-in-a-lifetime purchase. So keep your micrometer clean, especially the contact surfaces of the anvil and spindle. Before I put any micrometer away, I make sure the surfaces are clean by pulling a cloth, usually my shirt, between the two and I double check by closing the mic and confirming that it returns to zero with the action of the ratchet. If you live in an environment prone to rust, watch for any corrosion of these surfaces. I hope you found this video informative and I look forward to seeing you next time.